So I decided before the market closed to dollar cost average down my BRFS position. So in my last video, I believe this was setting at about a dollar. No, it was sitting at two dollars and some change. Average cost basis. Uh, you can see there the you know my cost total is now five thousand five eighty one. So I added about $1,500 or more to that. I don't know. But I brought it down to $1.83. That's the last change that I made. I also numbered these. So I have nine total swing trades that I'm doing. The ones in green, I'm up. The ones in red, I'm not. So it's nice to see that um, one, two, three, four, five, six of them are green and three are red. So, 66% of these are in the green. That's a plus. Looking at making that money. So, I uh, average down on this here just because I, I have, you know, a lot in it. So, just between these two positions, there's almost 11 grand in those. So, I want to be able to eventually free that up when I get to a good exit point that I want. Um, so I also did the math. My total swing trade money, I have nearly $28,000 tied up in just swing trades. So, yeah. That's pretty wild. So I have that twenty-eight grand in there to try to flip that money and make some money on them um i said i feel good about these companies i explained to you opk how you know vanguard and fidelity how it's kind of a foreman case so i feel pretty good about that i do think i could turn around and make some nice money off of that um brfs that was also at that 147 which is appealing because uh, opk was at 113 um I almost did not dollar cost average just down, but I did decide to because after doing a little bit of checking on uh, BRFS, which I already did a little bit, it's uh, food processing and all that stuff, but there's a little bit more to it, so we me take a look at it right quick. So if you look, you know, same thing, I looked up the holders, you got Goldman Sachs in here. You know, international, private group, BlackRock. They, they're they in a lot of random stuff. I don't really know much about them. iShares, uh, some other stuff like that. SPDR, you know, and so forth. There's just different ones. But I was like, all right, so the top holder is All Springs Global Investments. You know, setting that $41 million. You know in this and I was like what is that okay so I went ahead and I looked into it and I was like all spring global investments you see up here I was like what do I get well I look over here it says Wells Capital Management parent organization Wells Fargo and company so this is a subsidiary of Wells Fargo from what I'm understanding here so I was like well I like Wells Fargo and I work for a subsidy of J.P. Morgan, like, you know, the company I work for, J.P. Morgan owns it. So you look at Wells Fargo, there's a huge difference. $156 billion almost market cap, 10.62 P.E., pays a 2.94% dividend. You got 239,000 employees. Wells Fargo has been around forever, we all know this. You know, I was like, you know, dang. I mean, right there, I used, I had Wells Fargo shares way back there, but due to things, ended up selling them. And I knew, I knew selling that would have, would have sucked. But oh well. But anyway, so after doing a little digging, Wells Fargo is the parent organization of All Springs Global, from what I understand. So that means they kind of probably tell them, hey, look, you know, you guys report to us, etc. So forth. And they had to tell them, I'm assuming, that they have this amount of money inside the 
position here, the BRFS. So, <clears throat> after doing a little research on that, I was like, all right, yeah, I feel pretty good about adding some more funds to this and bringing down my uh, average cost basis. You know, so I went ahead and did that. That way I can get that ugly negative 838 number out of there and start getting that number in the green. That high number, high number that I want. But I numbered them all, one through nine, so I have nine total swing trades that I am doing. Um, so I'll probably be setting on these probably for most of the next week, unless next week come Tuesday is just a bull run in the market. You know, and things start skyrocketing up to where my exit points are, then ahead I'll go ahead and start liquidating some positions. Uh, assuming that it lets me, because some of these I bought and it says I can't take it out because otherwise it's a it's a violation of like the good faith thing or whatever and I don't want to do that so which ones that will let me do if they meet my exit point I will take out the ones I did in blue those are positions that I am wanting to build up um, Adidas I have not started Amazon that's in the last video I added 10 more shares to that uh, my total I'm still down on, but all right. I have these 10 shares here, and, and if, uh, for those of y'all that didn't know it, this is the company that produces the poly and it produces wood glue, so forth. So it's kind of like getting into a commodity, and it gives me the Berkshire Hathaway exposure that I've been wanting. Um, so I'm already up 10 bucks there. <laughs> cool. But that's long term holding. Uh, Meta. I have not really gotten that going yet, but I want to. Um, I mean, so it, I already got a little bit of green there. Paramount, again, this is uh, one of those companies that's exposure to Berkshire's, Berkshire Hathaway, which I said, and I'm going to build that position up more and more as well. And then uh, PayPal, I'll eventually get to. And then I got the Taiwan Semiconductor, which I also want to build that up. Um, I'm going to wait and see if it goes down a bit more, you know, to a point that I want to in get into more. But, yeah, so once a lot of these swing trades turn around and get into the exit points that I want, that would be great, especially if I exceed my $1,075, because then I'll turn around and I'll start buying um you know building those other positions up that i want and i'll probably withdraw a little bit of money out of here uh not to pay the loans like i said i, I have four thousand set in there just to be automatically withdrawn but to pay down um the credit cards you know the credit card debt that i have uh but i also want to build up some other positions so hopefully i can do really well by by Three weeks from now, hopefully I'm making like 2,500 on a good day, right? You know, on a good month, right? 25, 3K, you know, because then I'll start being able to take out a ground drop on the credit card debt, uh, which y'all have seen what it was. It hasn't changed, you know, since that. And then, uh, yeah, and I'll still buy positions and then get all that paid, you know, and then I'll have the money falling off to the loan. And that's the, that's the best side of it. That's where, you know, taking on a loan and debt is a good thing because there is such thing as good debt and bad debt good debt is when you could take that money have debt have interest you have to pay but you're making more money than you're losing in interest you know in the loan and that's my goal that's good debt bad debt is taking a credit card going to town buying uh let's say a surround sound system and a giant TV for three grand okay but you didn't actually have that three grand well now you're paying a lot more money you know as you pay that off you know because I doubt you know I mean that's pretty expensive set of equipment in my opinion so yeah good debt is what I'm doing right now making money with it and then having money paying it back that's good debt that's what you want to have I mean, do I like to spend money occasionally? Yeah, who don't? But that's what that's what we're going for. 
Um, then I have those ones I just print cash cow because I don't know that's what it says. But those are ones that I get the dividends off of, as always. And I labeled some of these as safety, which simply means those are positions that they're not they don't really pay you a lot of money, but they're very safe. You do get paid a little bit, and it's just a very safe place to park money. Obviously, looking at these. Um, the only one that I actually have anything in is pretty much AT&T. That's the only one where there's anything substantial, you know, a, you know, a little bit of money. So, yeah. And I'm about just straight even. At one point, that position was up like 500 bucks, but that's the market for you. You know, that's why you pick stocks that you want to get into to get out of. And then you have stocks that you get into when you stay in them. For instance, MFA. That says total gain 578. But a week ago, that total gain was 900. But I'm not in that one to jump out of it. You know, that I'm in for the dividend. So I don't really care what it does. The ones numbered 1 through 9 are the ones that I'm getting in and out of. So, yeah, I just want to share with you, um, you know, a little bit more information on BRFS. You know, how Wells Fargo has a subsidiary that has a play in it so it's a little bit of insurance uh, also it has a hundred thousand employees you know so pretty good but markets closed this snapshot was at 229 so the market was open at that time but I haven't made any changes since then um, so now I'm just watching videos on YouTube other people's positions and you know they're their accounts which are a lot bigger than mine mine's very small or these other people they have accounts where they're making like 87,000 a year in dividend money you know their accounts obviously a million dollar multi-million dollar accounts I'm not there hopefully one day but I'm slowly building it up and these are the tools that I'm using to build it up the loan um, swing trade positions um, looking at like I do good here um, I'm going to add more money to my 401k next year because I put some thought into that. That way I keep my tax bracket low. So that way whatever money I make here that I can, you know, take out with the swing trades, I'm not paying a high tax bracket for because I'm going to try to max out my 401k next year and whatnot. So that will also help build it up. And then if the markets do make a huge turnaround and go way up, I'll probably borrow against my 401k. Uh, just to be able to get that money and maybe, I don't know, I, I just either throw it into this and then I can have like, you know, sixty seventy thousand dollars $70,000 to be able to, you know, build up more positions, swing trade with, etc. We don't know, but I mean, it's really just, I just do it by what I think is a good move to make at the time. Uh, this is where I'm at with the portfolio and we'll just see what's going on. So hopefully... We get a lot of green coming soon. If not, all right, but I'll make it work. But yeah, it'd be nice to see some huge green come up, get a lot of quick gains, cash them out, and then just have that 25, 30 grand just sitting in there to buy positions with. But right now, it's buying. When they all go green and start going very well, that's just riding it up. And then you find your exit point, you get out, be patient and wait. But the way it looks is if that does happen and I get, you know, uh, a run on some of these swing trades, you know, I get a nice little run on them. You know, it doesn't even have to be all of it. I'm in nine different trades. I can get a run on just one or two of them. And that's great. And I can still wait on the others. You know, but then I could take those out, pay a little bit toward, you know, my card, whatever. And then just continue to build these positions like Amazon. I am at 20 shares of Amazon now. That's great. You know, I mean, like, I know these shares aren't as valuable as, you know, what they were before. Because Amazon, I'm pretty sure, did a stock split. So, but yeah, you know, building it up. I definitely think Amazon will go a lot higher like like what do we got so all right so Amazon yeah like well let's see 
Amazon might not go. This is just something I'm building a position in because I want to have some shares in Amazon. But I think this is about, like I said in previous videos, the rock solid, you know, the, the, the rock solid value of the company. So I don't think it'll skyrocket back up that quick, honestly. I think it'll probably just stay steady a bit. But it'll slowly climb up. It's still a good one to get into. But it's not one of those things that I think, I don't think it's going to do what it did here back in 2020 and go Bleh, all the way up, you know, as much as it did. I don't think it's going to do all that. Um, but it's still one that I want to have a nice position in because it's pretty solid. And if Amazon ever decides to pay a dividend in the future, you never know. They could pay like, they could just open up and say, I want to pay a $50 dividend, you know, a 30 cent dividend. Yeah, and that's that's pretty good. So we just we really just don't know. But yep, this is where I'm at. Pretty excited. Can't really do anything now, so I just enjoy the weekend as long as power stays on. And uh, we'll go from there. Now I'm sitting at 70 degrees in my house, but I got some candles and other stuff and like propane. For heaters got more propane just in case i need it but anyway i guess i'm just gonna enjoy the day hang out with some folks and all that you know at least for a little bit just wanted to give you an update on what i did i got these swing trades i got my blue things that i want to build positions in, and so forth and uh hopefully we see some high green positions coming up soon and that way i can make a video with like taking an 800 dollar gain or something that'd be great it'll happen so uh Yep. Hopefully some of these things are helping you all out and your own things and what y'all do. I said I'm starting from pretty much nothing and I'm uh, having to take loans and so forth to get there, pay these loans back and uh, just you borrowing money to make money is what I'm doing. You know, and I gotta look at the interest, I gotta look at the taxes, so forth. So there's a lot going on but you you pretty time and effort into it you know it pays off and you get a uh, then you start getting that wealth you know that you think you can't ever achieve you know and I've been there I thought like man I can't get that you know but I really do believe I can you know seeing this seeing things go up I mean like just looking just looking at this from when I acquired this position a hundred and forty six dollars increase I mean even after that gets taxed that's like a day's pay of what I would get anyway. And all I did was have to, you know, do that. You know, are you losing a little bit because of the money that's incurring interest that I had to borrow to do it? Sure. But like I already said, I did that math. Like the loan, for me to complete that loan is the thirty thousand, the 36600 so 6600 And that's over three years' time. I know I can make that. So, in the end... I'm going to be making money. But if you have any questions, let me know. I'll be happy to try to answer them for you. Uh, if you have any insight to help me out, I'll be like, hey, you know, this is something you could do better. I'd love to hear it because I'd like to reply to that. So, uh, see you next week because it's the only time I make another video because there's no updates. But, all right, well, thanks for checking out. See you in the next one.